Hi, let's check out the Zintany Ra Backpack Adventure Light. Now this is a Kickstarter that I backed uh, early uh, 2016, so over a year ago now, and it's basically they promised delivery in uh, June, I believe, of 2016. It's now July 2017, so over a year late, so typical, you know, crowdfunding campaign type delays, but they have finally delivered the product. So as part of the Kickstarter, I got the two strap lights plus the uh, three output battery pack here for 99 US dollars. This uh, current dual package currently goes for about $215 now. So it's not a cheap bit of kit. So let's check it out. So the reason they call it a backpack light is it's, well, it was originally designed to like be strapped onto the shoulder straps of a backpack and of course you've got two shoulder straps hence available in a double pack and it was designed to be flexible it's not as flexible as I thought it would be I'm putting a lot of force onto that and that's about as far as it can go in that direction so I thought it'd be a bit more flexible but it's good enough um, for the shoulder strap of a backpack I would uh, suspect and I did not get but I believe you can uh, buy as accessories like uh, velcro attachments and like a d-ring attachment for it that uh, can go onto backpacks and other uh, stuff like that so I'll just have to figure out my own way to fix that fix that I'm not even sure it was an option at the time for the uh, Kickstarter but it's basically uh, USB power there's no inbuilt battery there are five high quality Cree LEDs in there I'm not sure of the exact uh, type and of course course it's a uh, the the fins on there you can see are uh, the uh, heat sink because of course you have to get heat out of this puppy because uh, they can be quite bright there are uh, three di multiple levels with the uh, single push button it's designed to be uh, waterproof and the light output is massive it's actually up to 1600 lumens <laughs> supposedly so yeah um it is pretty kick-ass it does have uh, lower modes as well 120 degree uh, angled pattern on it with a perfect supposedly like a perfectly diffused uh, pattern so the whole idea behind it is you strap it onto your backpack and you're walking through a cave or the bush at night or something like that doing uh, some other adventure activity and it just floodlights everything in front of you evenly so the whole idea is that the battery pack uh, goes inside your backpack when you're hiking or you're adventuring or caving or doing anything like that. And these go on your uh, shoulder straps and you can uh, design to give a nice even light. That was the claim of this thing was that it was going to be beautifully even and just light up the surrounding uh, environment. Perfect for say uh, caving or for any sort of you know adventure mountaineering or something like that. You know typically you're going to use a uh, headlamp but if you're doing long bush walks and things like it's not the right lighting solution because two of these weigh you know a reasonable amount you know anodized aluminium and of course a big beefy 13,400 milliamp hour uh, lithium ion pack is not lightweight as well so you know usually the goal of uh, uh lightweight bushwalking is to go as lightweight as possible so you're gonna get a real lightweight headlamp and you just put up with how much uh, light that's willing to give out versus battery this is like a, a real high-end solution for producing lots of light if you don't care about weight basically so it's not for your ultra lightweight uh, bushwalkers who you know care about every gram sorry ounce for you yanks and I forgot to show you the nice little uh, pouch it comes in, uh, draw string, and also it comes with the uh, Velcro that you can actually uh, put between here and then Velcro around, stuff like that. Very handy. But yeah, it fits in there quite nicely, so you can throw a couple of those in your backpack. Now, I've got to say, it does feel very nice, super high quality. The anodized aluminium feels uh, fantastic. The uh, This braided uh, USB cable feels really good. The strain relief on there feels fantastic. Look at all the screws in the back beautiful so yeah I like they this has not been built down to a cost so hats off they've really done the business so as with most uh, crowdfunding campaigns they you know had a lot of production issues they thought they could get this into production in a couple of months and well a year later they had to redesign all the optics and all sorts of things but they kept everyone up to date and it was it was really good it was a really apart from being late it was you know a quite a well-run campaign the communication was excellent so no problems at all and they basically did deliver what they promised our uh, five uh, Cree LEDs on a flexible uh, mount like this USB powered and so yeah it, it's done the business they have delivered
But you know what we say here on the EV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. And that's exactly what I've done here. I've, if we flip it over, we can see I've just taken, uh, of course, these are all going to be identical in here. So I just take off the last one and the first one, we can see the circuitry down in there. And let's check it out. Now, the first thing I notice is that they've uh, wrapped the PCB, like, mo well, no, not molded. They've got two two separate parts, a top part and a bottom part there with all this rubber around it. And that's how they're getting the waterproofness of the pressure of the rubber going down against the board like that to stop the water ingress onto the uh, main PCB. So it looks like they've got two strips of uh, spring steel on the top and bottom like that wedged between and the PCB wedged in between that. So I rather like that solution. It's really quite an elegant one to get the waterproofness along the uh, whole length of the thing where you got these separate uh, enclosures. So yeah, they um, were really thinking when they did that. Nice. And the lens, it just sits on top of the rubber like that. So once again, a uh, beautiful uh, seal, rubber seal, because the uh, pressure of the surrounding case like that, when you screw it on, will complete the waterproofness of that. So I, I really don't doubt that this thing is uh, quite uh, waterproof. It's IPX7 rated, so it's designed for uh, submersion. So, you know, you wouldn't go diving with the thing or something like that, but like you can easily jump into a, a pool, swim across a, a river or a creek or something like that, or rain, no problem whatsoever. And of course, it's uh, all about the lens for the optics side of things. So there you go for all you lens aficionados. They've had to put a lot of work into that, uh, apparently, to get the uh, right light pattern, and I don't doubt it. And the neodymium magnets uh, came installed in here, but when I opened them up, they sort of like flipped out. They're so strong, they flipped out and, uh, uh, yeah, got themselves, uh, well, they ended up on the uh, surface under there. So, oopsie, yep, there they go. Maybe my only complaint is that the thermal compound they've used, it's gone a bit flaky, like it's gone a bit hard and flaky. So it's, you know, it, it's maybe not the best, but I'm, oh, it's hard, yeah, it's hard to say. Like it, mm, we'll see. And it hasn't had any use. It's not like it's gone hard through uh, heat, um, like it's hardened up over time or anything like this. This is uh, shipped brand new, hasn't been used. But one awesome feature of this, look, individual thermistor on each one. They've also got a thermistor up here as well. Fantastic. So that prevents um, individual lead overheating. Great attention to detail. Love it. And of course, you can see how they're getting the heat out there. Standard uh, multiple via arrangement on the uh, bottom of the board conducting the heat from the top side. So if you combine that with the uh, solid aluminium uh, backing plate on there, plus the fins on the top, which are uh, going to get any, uh, you know, breeze or anything, especially as you're walking, you're going to generate breeze across that. These things are going to stay pretty cool. Um, assuming that they've done their uh, thermal calcs right, and I suggest they had, but it looks like a very nice design. If we have a look at the circuitry on the top side of the board here, we've got a Texas Instruments uh, 61 to 500, and that's a uh, constant current lead driver boost circuit with uh, dimmer. So five volts uh, DC in, uh, driving, and obviously uh, they've got five, the all five LEDs in uh, series string configuration. So a nice chip designed specifically for the purpose. So no worries whatsoever. Uh, looks like they've got a big beefy uh, inductor there and a big ass diode over there, it looks to be doing the job, no problems whatsoever. For the other side there, this MGB0, is it uh, 1644? I'm not sure what that's doing, but obviously, uh, well, they've got PIC there. So is that a, uh, is that a PIC micro? Hmm, because it's got to generate, we need something to generate the uh, PWM signal for the different uh, brightness levels. And just do some measurements with it on uh, low brightness. We're actually getting at the end of the cable 5.16 volts. So that's good. It's uh, compensating for uh, any loss in the cable. But let's uh, switch that brightness up, shall we? How do we do that? There we go. Whoa, full brightness. Whoa. Still 5 volts at the board. Perfectly designed. I love it. And they've got a good rubber surround on the button there, so that will uh, prevent any issues uh, with water ingress through the button. And the board wedges in there like that, and, and probably the only potential place where uh, water could get in is through this uh, 
uh, strain relief on the end, which is excellent, by the way. I really like that. That should last a long time. And there's a lot of uh, copper in this uh, cable as well, a uh, lot of strands. So it should, you know, last for quite a significant, uh, you know, flexing abuse and uh, stuff like that movement. Because, of course, this thing's going to be uh, moving all the time when, well, it should be strapped down to your shoulder strap, but there's going to be movement. But, yeah, that's really, you know, you couldn't ask for much better than that. And we've got about uh, 25 milliamp draw there on the uh, low setting. Let's whack it up to high and see what we get. There we go. Drawing 1.37 amps. So that's a uh, consumption on uh, full brightness there. It, it only has the two uh, brightness levels plus a flashing mode of uh, 7 watts. And so for a nominal energy uh, capacity of, you know, 49 and a half uh, watt hours, we're looking at about uh, seven hours continuous use on full brightness. I'm not going to have the uh, time to test it for this uh, video, but I, I'll take it as a given. I'm sure they've done their uh, test. This looks like a professional solution. So I don't know where the uh, battery pack, who it's made by, you know, assembled in some one hung low factory in China. But, you know, I'm sure it is a decent quality one. It feels decent quality. It, it's the vibe feels pretty good so I'm sure you'd get you know close to six to seven hours use on full brightness but of course you wouldn't be always using the thing on full brightness you'd be uh, you know just for regular uh, walking or something like that I'm sure the uh, lower brightness setting is more than good enough and I actually like how they've made the cutout for, for the uh, thermistor in there very nice touch one small little criticism, when I was taking this out, I did see a couple of uh, braid, like uh, dags coming off from the uh, braided, this is a braided uh, cable, so metal dags coming off. They just need to be careful in production that they don't short over to any of the pins on the top side or the bottom side. Because, you know, you might get a yield failure there. So I've had it running for a little bit. Let's have a look under the uh, Fleur camera there. You can see that the hottest parts are actually the metal uh, strip. In between there which are getting like 45 I think I measured one of them up to probably close to 50 47 something like that but the uh, the back side of the anodized uh, heatsink uh, section of each one you know 40 odd degrees so as long as you keep it under 50 like which is basically the uh, too hot to touch uh, temperature it, it should be all right. So that's not bad considering that this is, remember, this is drawing seven watts. So yeah, you need a lot of surface area to get rid of that heat. And that's, and that's doing not too shabby at all. You can see the uh, battery pack over there as well. That's getting up to 30-ish. Oh, and if we have a look at the top side there, once again, it's getting, you know, it's getting, yeah, 50 on the metal strap and some parts of the... Uh, front surface that's the uh, dome of the lens so yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna give that a pass considering that's a static in here no air con on so there's no airflow over that that's pretty good that'll get cooler once you start walking or in uh, cooler environments and you can select which mode it uh, powers on in too. I've, I've selected so it comes on uh, the full 1600 lumens but of course if you cycle through you can uh, set it the low one and then you can just press and hold the button and it'll flash and then next time you switch it on, it should. I don't like that you can't just switch it off. That's a bit annoying. Urgh, what am I doing wrong? I haven't read the manual. I don't think it actually came with the manual. There we go, off and then back on, low brightness. Yeah, uh, the buttons are a bit funny. Uh, there could be a pebcac. So I've got it hooked up to my backpack. Let's give it a burl. Although it's daytime here, so I'm just going to walk around the lab like a dork. All right, I've got it. It's on. Um, it's just the particular backpack I've got's right in right high on here, and it's you know you really have to get it down uh, much lower to if you wanted it to point down towards the ground. So that's just an implementation uh, thing. But I can uh, change the brightness up here. Cool. Let's turn that lights, give it a bell. God, I'm a dork. All right, so let's switch it on. I've got uh, constant exposure here. It really is quite hard to, uh, you know, film this sort of stuff. So please forgive me. That's one of them on full brightness. And, oh, hello. There's the other. So there you go. 
I walk around, it really is an incredibly even uh, pattern of light. There's no real hot spot. The only hot spot is where they, um, is where they overlap. But if you uh, take, you know, if you only have just the one, it really is a very even beam. I'm not sure if you're seeing that, but yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. This might be hard to see, but uh, on low, I think it's going to be good enough at, uh, uh, you know, night time for just for walking through the scrub or for doing, you know, basic scrambling or uh, anything else. And of course, you get a massive battery life from that most of the time. It's only, you know, if you were uh, skiing at night or something, you'd want the full brightness. If you're mountain biking at night or something like that, you definitely want the full brightness. But yeah, I think it's good enough. It'd nice, be nice to have an extra mode, though. And just for a constant exposure camera uh, comparison, this is my uh, D-Cell mag light. And, you know, it's, it's not that great at all. And we switch on the Zintany Ra. Look at that. That's just one of them. Nice. It's just no contest. And look at the evenness of it. You can see the uh, spot nature of the mag lamp. And I tell you what, it barely hangs on with all the magnets on one side under its own weight. That's like, yeah. Not great, but good enough for its intended uh, purpose, of course, which is to go uh, inside clothing with the uh, strap that they've got on this thing, uh, which you can buy separately and then put inside your shirt and it just clips onto your shirt uh, without any attachment at all. That's quite novel. I think it's really quite good and really quite novel. Really quite well engineered. I'm very impressed by that. They really haven't put a foot wrong there. So that's uh, fantastic. Of course, I haven't done any long-term uh, tests on it and stuff like that out in the field. But, uh, you know, just from the looks of things, the uh, teardown and the design and the look and feel of it, um, it looks like they've really hit the money on that. So no worries whatsoever. So it comes down to whether or not it's fit for purpose. Most definitely, you know, if you're doing any nighttime skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking or something like that, to have this uh, strapped onto your uh, clothing, onto your backpack or uh, something like that, it's fantastic. And it's basically a new concept. I'm not sure if anyone's actually doing, if there's any competitors for this uh, like strap-based uh, light. Just wish it maybe had an extra uh, mode on the thing or something like that, or maybe adjustable uh, brightness or something like that would have been uh, quite neat. So they actually delivered on this thing and they delivered well and it is superbly engineered. I love it, the Zintany Ra. So I give that a thumbs up for its uh, category of a strap light. Um, they're, they're basically creating a new category almost, but yeah, that's well engineered. So definitely a thumbs up there. It, uh, at 215 odd US dollars, it's an expensive solution for the two strap lights plus this, plus the, uh, in including this, uh, and plus the accessories uh, on top of that, if you want those. But if you're serious about your uh, nighttime adventure stuff, there's probably no rival. I mean, 1600 lumens. I can't wait to actually use this in anger in the field. Should be fantastic, but that's got wind written all over it. So anyway, I like it. And if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss in the comments or EV blog forum down below. Catch you next time.